A prayer for thanksgiving. Father in heaven, creator of all and source of all goodness and love, please look kindly upon me and receive my heartfelt gratitude in this time of giving thanks. Thank you for all the graces and blessings you have bestowed upon me, spiritual and temporal, my faith and religious heritage, my food and shelter, my health, the ones that I love, my family and friends. Dear Father, in your infinite generosity, please grant me continued graces and blessing throughout the coming year. This I ask in the name of Jesus, your son. Amen. Hi, and welcome to me, Jennifer Valentine Miller, during another edition of the Jennifer Valentine Miller Show in January. So when I, went, when I was preparing for today's show, and this is about loneliness, I remembered the lyrics uh, of an author of a famous 50s song who wrote, here comes that feeling again, and it isn't right. That lonely feeling that came to me last night, said the song. Now, since being introduced to that song many years ago, and I am a 60s child, it has always made me feel extremely sad and then encouraged when the singing artist sings out, I have got to get rid of this lonely feeling. At times in life, that feeling of being alone will, yes, make you feel alone and yearning to feel connected with others, especially in your job, for example. Now, this feeling being described is the emotion of loneliness. Other words people use to describe loneliness include feeling empty, isolated, excluded or left out. You can feel lonely when you're physically alone. And you can also feel lonely in the presence of others. Loneliness is really a reflection of whether or not you feel connected to others and even yourself. God is a God of good relationship and community. That is evident in his very nature. He is the Trinity, the three in one. He's God the Father, he's God the Son, and he's God the Holy Spirit. In opening chapters of the Bible, God established that it's not good for man, and he's referring to Adam, to be alone in the book of Genesis. His solution, as God continued, I'll make him a helper, a companion. And that's in Genesis 2.18, and that's from the message version. And the message version says also that God brought Eve to Adam and they became one flesh. We are designed to be in community with God and with one another. Perhaps that is why loneliness hits us the way it does. The Bible has a lot to say about feeling lonely and its opposite, which is feeling connected. So loneliness can affect all of us and the signs of loneliness may be clear to you if you are feeling lonely. You long to feel be connected or have conversation or be held accountable but what if it's not obvious depending on the situation the signs of an underlying state of loneliness may include feeling bored excessively tired feeling helpless and threatened and not sleeping well perhaps feeling physically inactive including not wanting to exercise it is normal to feel lonely from time to time, but ongoing loneliness triggers stress and that is so potent and it can affect everyday life. We spoke about feeling tired and lethargic and less mentally alert. He or she may experience stomach and digestive problems and other incidents of sickness and disease. Many research find that loneliness is associated with the risk of early death, and that is equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. 
and that can be lethal, even more so than obesity. In contrast, people who reported having greater social connections were associated with a 50% reduced risk of early death. Because people who experience ongoing loneliness don't feel well. They frequently engage in behaviours or ingest substances that may take them temporarily or make them temporarily feel better or even numb the pain. The danger is that many of these substances and behaviours are addictive. The common addictions include alcohol, drugs, tobacco, eating, exercise, uh, watching television, internet, use smartphone use, sexual practices, shopping and working. Researchers found that nearly two quarters of the UK population have an addiction to one or more substances or behaviours that have serious negative consequences for their health. And this also includes working long hours. Feeling bored and lonely are closely related. In both instances, you feel disengaged from tasks, and that's what boredom is, or other people. Depression, though distinct, frequently follows and is coexistent with loneliness, as a person who is depressed will often withdraw from engaging with others. Examples of loneliness in the Bible sees that God's people are not exempt from the pain of loneliness. David was well acquainted with it and his honest cries to God are recorded in the Psalms. As we read in Psalms 25, 16 to 21, we see that David is longing to be connected to God and his reliance upon that relationship. The passage reads, Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. See how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame. For I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope is in you. God's prophets often felt the pain of rejection and loneliness. There is a prophet Jeremiah. The Lord told Jeremiah not to marry. He had few friends, and scholars refer to Jeremiah as the weeping prophet. God called him to speak out against the sinfulness of Judah and warn of impending judgment and as the people of Judah repented and changed their ways. In Jeremiah chapter 15, this captures the prophet speaking to God about his loneliness, his unending pain and suffering. And despite his pain, Jeremiah trusted the Lord and followed God's calling for his life. Scripture tells us that Jesus experienced loneliness. On the cross he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In Mark 15, 34. A man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Jesus can empathise with the pain of loneliness because he experienced it. And it's always good to get in habit and rely upon the scriptures when we're feeling lonely. Throughout the Bible, one can see that the connection with God and others of, of Jesus' followers is good and desirable and pre preferably to be being isolated and alone. And David wrote again how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life furthermore, in Psalm 133. And Jesus assured his disciples, for where there are two or more gathered in my name, there I am with them. 
in Matthew 18, 20. And speaking on the effects of a person's work and enjoyment of life, when we're not connected with others, King Solomon observed again, I saw something meaningless under the sun. There was a man all alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked, when I am depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless. It's a miserable business. Two are better than one, of course, because they have a good return for their labour. If either of them falls down, one can help the other. But pity anyone who falls and has no help to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. That's in Ecclesiastes 4, 7 to 12. And Ephesians 4, 25 to 27, Paul conveyed a sense of urgency about repairing broken relationships so that we're not alone and weak, thereby giving Satan a foothold to attack the body of Christ. There are many other verses that communicate the message that together we have great support and strengthen enough to resist temptation and idle behaviour. So have you felt lonely and found that maybe reading or listening to scripture is a good source of comfort? Because scripture is supernatural and can help anyone who feels lonely, including lonely singles, lonely married couples, and those who are experiencing loneliness and depression. As a foundation it is, God's words reminds us that despite our loneliness, telling us that we are alone, as he beloved us as children, and because of that belovedness, we are never alone. And the, the following verse is a good place to start. And in Psalms it says, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Again in Psalms it says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. And Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Psalm 27, 10, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the presence nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depths, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God, and that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's from Romans 8, 38 to 39. More verses, 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety onto him, because he cares for you. A father to the fathers, a defender of widows is God. In his holy dwelling, God sets a loneliness that is separated in families. He leads out the prisoners with sin, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. That's Psalm 68, 5 to 6. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. That is what we are in 1 John 3, 1. Keep your lives free from what the love of money offers and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, nor will I forsake you. In Hebrews 13, 5. And God's answer to loneliness as a follower of Jesus, you are part of God's kingdom of priests and you have a role to play. In 1 Peter 2, Peter wrote, you are a chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, 
that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The function of priests was to connect the Jewish people with God. The law was clear that priests were to be from the tribe of Levi, and Levi means to connect. And now there were strict rules in place about how and when and who would approach God on behalf of the people. Jesus changed that. Mark's account of the death of Jesus on the cross includes a curious statement. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last breath. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom in Mark. What is the significance of the curtain? This curtain is a curtain that separates people from the holy of holies. Only certain priesthoods were allowed to step into that sacred space. In ripping open the curtain, God communicated that the old priestly order ended, so that now we are priests, and together we are a royal priesthood, charged with connecting people with God and empowered by the Holy Spirit for that purpose. God's plan is for you to proactively live your life as a priestly calling. So when you are sad and lonely, or when you feel so alone, remember that you are called to connect with people of God. Intentionally living into your calling will help you overcome a chronic loneliness. Being a kingdom of priesthoods means that each of us is able to connect with God, connect with fellow believers, reach out and connect with people who don't know God. Again, the connecting with God comes by reading scripture, praying, participating in worship and receiving communion. There are many practices that some people like to do. One of them is remembering um, scripture verses, writing them down on cards and organising topics and probably sharing passages with one another and probably trying to do this before we go off to sleep at night. And connecting with fellow believers, if that's something you want to find yourself doing, it would mean attending worship service on a regular basis, partaking in Bible studies or a small group, and enjoying times of fellowship, and serving alongside others at events or in the community. And that's a good way of, of not being alone and being connected. And that's far different from trying to find yourself a future wife, a future husband or a soulmate. We're talking about just being part of that community. It's always good to look for a group that combines it spent in the word, sharing prayer requests and praying for each other. It's difficult to find friends, but developing trusted friendship in church is an enormous blessing. And reaching out to connect with people who don't know the Lord is integral to the Christian life. Evangelism is key. There are voluntary sectors if you feel that there's no avenue within the church. There are voluntary sectors and organisations who are there week in, week out, serving people, meeting and greeting. And maybe God will put someone on your heart and you may want to pray for them and then reach out and connect. The natural inclination at times when you're feeling lonely might be to, to pull back and see if anyone reaches out to you. But it is encouraged to turn around and step out in faith. Don't avoid praying to God for help first before stepping out into a ministry just to see if that ministry really is for you within your local church community. 
God is faithful. He is faithful and he will open doors so that we, we can become more connected with the local church family. And when God comes into contact with divine connection, as in John 17, 20, it says, tell us that they will see that God loves them. Hear Jesus' heart for you and his heart for, for connection with your heart. And during a time of loneliness, send your prayer to the Heavenly Father. As a reminder, and depend on situations, signs of an underlying state of loneliness, as we said, may include feeling bored, excessively tired, feeling helpless and threatened, not sleeping well, being physically inactive, and that includes um, not wanting to exercise. David wrote, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. For there the Lord bestows his blessings. Even life furthermore, Jesus assured his disciples that where two or more are, are gathered, he is there. In Matthew 8, 20. It's being in unity and reaching out is probably the most basic and most healing thing one can do when you're feeling lonely. I know many people in this day and age will turn to other means and one of them is despair. There is no need for that. Please seek the, the gospel and reach out to a local church nearby to you or to a local voluntary organization. Thank you.